VPCs are core to cloud networking, and they represent the top level of your software-defined networks. Whenever you create a VPC project, you will also get a default VPC, which always comes with the CIDR of 172.31.0.0/16. Remember that VPCs can overlap as they are separate routing spaces. You can use the default VPC as needed, but you can also create as many new VPCs as you need by selecting a name and CIDR. For those who are new to VPCs, we strongly recommend using the VPC wizard. This provides three options for creating VPCs and resources within them for a ready-to-use network. For example, if we select VPC with public and private subnets, you'll see that this creates not just the VPC network itself, but also two subnets, an internet gateway, a NAT gateway, an elastic IP, and it configures these all by creating the relevant route tables such that the private VPC subnet will use the NAT gateway and the public VPC subnet will use the internet gateway. If we click on a VPC, we can get more detailed information about it. The tabs along the bottom show related and relevant information, including subnets, route tables, and VMs associated with the VPC. And the top shows actions that can be performed on this VPC. One critical one here is the upgrade DNS. After a cloud upgrade from Zadara, you'll find that you'll be prompted to upgrade the DNS of all your VPCs. We recommend doing this in a timely manner as they come with upgrades to both performance and security. The upgrades do come with a short availability loss for the DNS service, generally about 10 to 20 seconds, so we recommend scheduling these in as soon as possible, but at a time when they won't interrupt service. Another important thing to talk about here is DHCP option sets. This default VPC is using the default DHCP option set. This default uses the domain name of symphony.local and the DNS name servers of 1.1.1.1. These will be passed via DHCP to all the VMs within this VPC. If we want to create our own DHCP option sets, we can do so from the DHCP option sets menu. You'll notice that most values here are optional, aside from the name. We can optionally add a DNS domain to be associated with all the VMs. We can add DNS servers. We can also add NTP servers, as well as NetBIOS values. Once we've created a DHCP option set, we can associate it with a VPC using the Attach DHCP Options button. Once attached, the VPC will use the values you configured when providing DHCP to your VMs. As always, for more information, you can always visit the Help menu, where you can find documentation and the Support Center.